Up above the Arctic Circle, this is Kebnekesa, home to Sweden's two highest peaks. Professor Ninis Rosqvist has spent decades researching the glacier on the southern summit, coming here to take measurements. In 35 years of research in the mountains, Rosqvist has seen this glacier shrink before her eyes. As climate change impacts hit the Arctic, the peak of this mountain is melting away. Uh, this little glacier on the peak, it's, uh, it's, it responds the same way as any other glacier in Sweden or Norway or, or the world. It's, it melts when it gets warmer. And the temperature in the summer when it's melting is more important than, than the snow that comes in the winter. And we've had really warm summers, heat waves really. And that has eaten off the glacier so much that it lost the position of being the highest. For years, the GPS measurements Roskvist is taking would have shown that she was on the highest peak in the country. But two years ago, the shrinking glacier meant the northern summit, which is bedrock and stays constant at 2,096.8 metres, became Sweden's highest peak. Warming in the Arctic is happening three times faster than the rest of the planet, recent reports say. Roskvist has witnessed this firsthand, measuring the southern summit as it has melted. With massive glaciers sometimes several square kilometres in size, changes that take decades to take place can be hard to see with the naked eye. For Rosqvist, this is no longer the case. You can't fool yourself anymore. It's just there and it has impacted this environment a lot. At the base of the mountains, this mire hides another major change taking place in the Arctic landscape. Beneath the marshy land here lies permafrost, soil that is frozen year-round for at least two consecutive years. As the climate warms, the permafrost is thawing, changing these landscapes even since research began at this site. When the researchers first started showing up and investigating these habitats, these ponds didn't exist. That smell of the hydrogen sulfide that's uh, associated with the methane that's being released, they wouldn't have smelt that. They wouldn't have seen these cracks and these slumping soil, so it would have been very different. With this metal rod, Keith Larson, head of the Arbisco Research Station, can measure the level of the permafrost. The permafrost here has remained frozen for thousands of years, in other places in the Arctic for hundreds of thousands of years. But as the frozen soil thaws, bacteria in the soil begin breaking down the biomass, releasing carbon dioxide and methane. Permafrost embodies a lot of stored carbon. And as long as it's frozen, that's a good thing. But when it starts to thaw, some of that carbon is going to wind up in the waters and in the atmosphere, and that's going to cause the climate to warm even more. Little infrastructure is built on Sweden's permafrost. The main signs of the thaw are bubbles of methane released from the marsh or these leaning electricity poles. This thaw could still have dramatic effects. Carbon stores found within the permafrost worldwide could threaten to disrupt the world's climate goals, according to a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in the US. Emissions may therefore need to be cut even further to avoid the worst consequences of climate change. For millennia, these Arctic landscapes have been home to the indigenous Sami peoples. On these lands, they let their reindeer graze freely for much of the year. The animals have provided communities with a living and a key to their livelihoods, but the changing climate presents a fresh threat to them. Nowadays, we don't have like that during pre-winter. Uh, you don't have a cold uh, period of time where the ground freezes and then you have snow. That creates uh, a good sort of ground for, for reindeer to, to dig up the lichen. But nowadays it could, it could rain for weeks and then it would transform into snow. And that creates uh, a layer of ice on the lichen that are left, uh, which of course makes it, uh, the reindeer isn't able at all to, to feed from it. For more than a century, the development of towns like this, the construction of railroads and the exploitation of resources in mines and quarries has encroached on these lands, they say, forcing them to continually adapt to keep their herds alive. 
And in many instances down in the forest, we are grazing sort of our forefathers' Plan C uh, type of, of, of pastures. So we really have to, to we have had to adapt a lot to the changes within the landscape. Here, above the Arctic Circle, the changes may already be irreversible. Rosqvist expects the glacier to keep shrinking, but she hopes her research can serve some purpose, offering lessons to other regions facing the challenges of climate change. I think the glaciers here will continue to melt because it's still getting warmer and we haven't reduced our emissions uh, yet. Uh, but maybe we can stop the melt of the larger ice sheets and, and, um, and then the knowledge we have from here can, can help. We see very clear signs that it's melting here and we don't want that to expand to the bigger ice sheets. It's not good.